please like, share, and subscribe so that we can continue to make these videos for you. Welcome in to Fire Mountain Gems and Beads. I'm Patty. I'm a jewelry designer here at Fire Mountain. And I'm Chris, a photographer here at Fire Mountain. And today we are back with the second in the series of five easy to do photo tips that are going to elevate your jewelry photographs. I'm really excited about this, Chris. Me too. This is a good one. Yeah. So in the last um, series, the first of the series, we did glass cabochons with text underneath. And what do we correct, Chris, in that? Well, basically the focus of that whole, that whole episode was light position. Yes. Right? Using it to define your piece, using it to define texture, give it a mood, control contrast. So in the first one, you and I learned how to shoot that glass cabochon um, so it looks just right, the color's just right, um, the reflection's just right, and it's a photo that you can be proud to show the public. Yeah. Okay, so today we're back with the second tip, and we're talking about shooting a dark piece. Mm -hmm. So when you have a piece that is mainly dark, how do you balance that out? Fantastic, right? And also some of the problems that we saw at the end of last episode where the right side of our cabochon was pretty dark and we had some really heavy shadows. So we're going to go into our triage here. We've got a lovely soda light pendant on a nice copper bale with some nice copper wire wrapped around. So those are kind of, again, our primary focus here. I can notice in Patty's shot here, really good job, Patty. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we can see a nice highlight. We get some really nice highlight of the metal as well to show us that it's metal. But again, kind of the struggle that we're having is the right side of our piece here in this display. It's very, very dark. Um, underneath the cording here, you might have a sep you might have a hard time separating the shadow from the actual cording. On the right side of the bale here with the wire and the soda light, it's kind of difficult to really see where the shadow in the bale begins, where the wire is on top of the bale and all of that. So we want to find a way to get more light on the right side of our piece. And the way that we do that is with a fill card. Great. So what I really want as a jewelry designer to show up in my photo, I want to see the detail in my dark piece because a lot of it gets lost. I can't really see what's going on in my piece. And then my beautiful white bust that I have it on here is kind of blue, kind of black. Um, so Chris, let's fix it. Let's fix it. This is an easy one and it's really affordable. Welcome to episode two of how to take pictures of your jewelry using your cell phone. Do you have a problem with dark shadows? Do you have a problem of differentiating your piece getting lost within shadows? Do you have a problem with high highlights, darkness, and not a lot in between? Well, today we're gonna introduce a tool that will solve all of this for you. And it's cheap and it's affordable and it's easy and it has impact and it is a fill card. You can get a fill card at your local art supply store. It's uh, marketed under foam core, doesn't cost that much. Cut yourself a couple pieces. I go for about two by three, two feet by three feet, uh, a little larger, a little smaller, but hey, let's begin. So let's just briefly go over a little bit of what we talked about in episode one about light position, because we basically picked up where we left off there with our highlight in the upper right hand corner of our cab showing some nice detail over on this side. But now here comes the struggle and the problem. We have very dark, distracting shadows that could almost steal the eye away from the main piece. It's a little hard to tell where our necklace begins and our display and shadows end. We also are not really getting much detail on the side of the cab here with the nice copper wire and copper bale that the soda light is glued to. So by taking our fill card that we just talked about and introducing it into the scene, we are going to have control over two things that photographers love to have control over. And that is contrast and shadow density and being able to get details in our shadows. Those are great. And so anytime we triage our piece and we need those things, we're going to reach into our toolkit and that toolkit is gonna to give us this fill card here to solve those problems, okay? And you can see as I bring it in and out of frame what it's doing to that darkness of the shadow and the overall contrast 
of the display with this lovely necklace. And by having a fill card in, our shadows have detail. We're seeing a little bit of the display come through that shadow. We're not hiding or having our cab blend into a dark shadow and kind of distorting the shape of it. We're defining our nice copper wire here and the copper bale that this lovely piece of soda light is affixed to. Also, on the right side of this cab, we're getting some nice detail of the soda light. This is the kind of the, the mix of everything that we want. We want a nice hard highlight that shows that it's shiny and is giving some of its detail and flecky colors in there. Uh, and now we have our fill side that is giving some nice mid-tone detail on the right side here. So it's a nice contrast of all types of light sources from hard to soft to bounce light. Using all three of those together in a great trinity like this is giving us a nicely filled, detailed image of this lovely piece of jewelry. So let's start shooting. I just got my tablet right here. I've got my little capture button. I've got my sturdy little tripod that it's affixed to. So our pictures stay in focus. And I'm gonna take some shots. Well, some of you might be asking, hey, why isn't one shot enough? is in post when we're messing a little bit around with the sliders you can have a lot of different versions one variation where you're kind of maybe tweaking the shadow slider more and another variation where maybe you're playing a little bit of playing around with the sharpness or the contrast and you want to have different versions and then again select it down to the proper choice but one of the biggest secrets of being a good photographer is filtering down to the proper choice you know this piece more than anybody else. So you're gonna see that picture and you're gonna know when it's right. And it's gonna be easy to go through about 18 of them and narrow it down to your favorite. All right, Chris, you took my photograph that was really kind of dark and really kind of kind of depressing. <laughs> and you worked your magic on it again. Tell me what you did. Well, it was real simple. We talked about introducing a fill card um, into our piece, which allows us to bounce our direct light and bounce it onto the other side of the piece in a very indirect way. So we've got direct light on our, on our left side and we've got indirect bounce on our right side. And having that ratio and being able to move our fill card in and out gives us so much control as a photographer. We love being able to control the density and darkness of our shadows and also the overall contrast of the piece. And so that's all we did here. Um, again, back to my point from episode one, no picture is, is ever perfect and there is always gonna be trade-offs here and there. And so with my light position and getting a really, really nice highlight in this upper right corner, as a result, I've got a little bit of a longer, more separated shadow than what we have over here on Patty's where it's a little bit tighter and more defined. And to tell you the truth, Patty, I would like your shadow position better than mine with a fill card in it and it would just be a little bit lighter. But with all that being said, having a nice bounce shadow like this underneath where we can still see the color of the display through it really kind of pops the piece off of the display and brings it forward to you as the viewer. It does, Chris. I'm really excited about this. I learned a lot because, you know, when I take a, a photo of my jewelry, I try and avoid the shadow altogether, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I just want to see the piece but I feel like this does give it the three-dimensionality and, and it does make it pop. What I really love about what you did here, first of all, you took it from a different angle so I see more of my piece. Like mm -hmm. here, you don't see the bottom of my piece so much. Mm -hmm. And as well, I can really see that the soda light in this, in this piece is really a pretty blue where it was very muddy over here. This photograph is fantastic. I feel like for this piece, it's really um, representational and what I want. Nice. So what would happen if I had, say, shiny sterling silver or something like that in here, mm -hmm. I have such a hard time shooting that. It comes out really light or white, and you don't get the beautiful depth and luster of the silver. Yes, metal is uh, super challenging, but super rewarding. And I can't wait to show you next time how you can fill your metal so it's not just all black or all white, because we want our metal to look like that quintessential chrome bumper right? Highlight, mid-tones, shadows, dancing together in a beautiful array of I am shiny metal. And so that's what we'll do next time on 5 Easy Tips.
Well, I really hope you love this series. And if you do, I really hope you like, share, and subscribe. So that we can continue to make these videos for you.